Welcome to ESB Science Blast. We'd like to share some of our top tips for your investigations. In this video, we'll describe some of the scientific habits that can help you design really effective surveys and questionnaires. As part of your ESB Science Blast investigation, your class might want to gather information about what people think or things they do. Scientists design their surveys very carefully, putting their questions to as many people as possible. Meet Sean. His group has developed questions for a survey that hopes to reveal how much time people really spend doing their homework and discover what kind of conditions they do it in. He's been thinking about ways to get people to be really honest and open about their homework habits. He agrees with Katie's suggestion that perhaps they should make their particular survey anonymous. What exactly does that mean? Can you discuss what they would have to do in practice to make it anonymous? What are the advantages and disadvantages of doing this? After doing some research, Sean discovers that there are some other important ways to encourage honesty and this is where our first big tip of be a learner, not a leader, comes in. The thing about us humans is that we tend to care quite a lot about what other people think, even if we don't want to admit it. And scientists know that this can often change how we answer questions in surveys. So, in order to learn from a survey, we need to be sure you don't accidentally lead or influence people with the words you use in the questions. Here are two of the questions that Sean's group proposed for their survey. We're pretty sure that a scientist would say that these questions are too leading. In other words, they contain hidden messages that might affect how some people will answer them. Can you see the hidden messages? How could they affect someone? How would you simplify the questions to reduce this? We'd suggest that Sean removes these parts in case the hint of teacher or expert opinions changes people's thinking. This issue can create a lot of challenges for survey designers and it's really difficult to get it completely right. Our second top tip has more to do with the way people give their answers. We call this one Be Data Wise because we want to encourage you to really think about what you will eventually do with the information or data that you collect. Scientists like to present their discoveries in charts, tables and graphs. Why? Because it makes it so easy to see patterns and communicate what they've discovered. Sean ended up getting 50 replies to the survey. He is delighted. Until the teacher asks if everyone can now show their results as a graph or a chart. They didn't think this through when they designed their questions. They've been lucky with question number one. Nearly everyone gave him a number as an answer. So creating a table and a graph it's going to be fairly straightforward. But for question two, they have got a problem. They asked people if they agreed with an opinion. Some people wrote a simple yes or no answer, but most people wrote a few sentences and the answers were all very different and complex. Have you any ideas of how they could have structured the way people answered question two to make it much easier to produce a graph at the end? The simplest way is to limit how people can answer the question. Tick boxes and multiple choice answers are great for this and make it easier to record people's ideas and opinions in graphs. So the most simple answer structure for question two could be this. But then some people just don't have an opinion. And some people have strongly held views and others less so. How far you go depends on how much data you can handle and what you want to do with it. 
When it comes to surveys, it pays to keep things as simple as possible. So when you're designing your survey, make sure your questions don't lead to learn and be data-wise by creating structured, easy to answer questions.